I'm wearing my colourful glasses, I'm wearing my colourful dress, and I'm wearing my colourful lippy. This week I'm talking about colour. So what about this for a mind-blowing thought? How would you describe colour to someone who's never seen colour before? Welcome to Science with Steph, the show where I think way too much about the world around us and then share the best bits with you guys. This week I'm looking at colour and light, how it's made, what is colour and how can two different pieces of the same material have two different colours? So wait a minute, I better sort out the colour in this video. There we go, that's better. Let's hope that works in post. <laughs> light waves that we can see with our eye actually make up a tiny part of a whole family of waves all on the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. I'm just gonna call them EM waves from now on because that's too many words for my tiny brain. Now, I could talk about the electromagnetic spectrum for ages. It's the reason I got into physics in the first place and every single part of the spectrum is so interesting and tells us so much about the world around us. But, for this video, I'm gonna stick with light. It's what we see, it's how we actually detect the world and it's the best place to start. Also, it's flipping fascinating. The first time I learned about colour and how different light waves make different colours just blew my mind and just changed the whole way that I thought about the world. So as I said in a previous video, white light is made up of all the colours of the rainbow and the reason that we see colour is because everything absorbs some of that light and reflects some of that light back to us. So actually, when you're seeing the yellow on my dress, what you're actually seeing is this dress absorbing all the red, orange, green, blue, violet colours and just reflecting the yellow back to you. If we could see what the world absorbs rather than what the world reflects, everything would look so different. And in fact, this light when it's absorbed tends to heat things up, which is why when you see May lying in the sun, the black parts on her fur tend to get really warm and the white parts stay nice and cool because you've been reflecting all that light, haven't you really? And if that absorbed light doesn't heat it up, then that energy is put in somewhere else, either to change the cell, help it grow, tan our skin. So isn't this just a fascinating way to look at colour? The thing itself is absorbing all the colours we don't see and reflecting all the colours we do see. Mind blown. How do we see colour? And what about people who can't see colour? What about colour blindedness? Ah, good question. Cynical Steph, where's your costume? Oh, I'm not cynical Steph, I'm just curious. We can see light because of millions of cells at the back of our eye called our retina. These cells are photosensitive, meaning that they convert light from the sun into neurological signals sent to our brain. These are your rods and your cones. Rods are super sensitive and can detect even just one photon of light at a time, but they don't see colour which is why in dark rooms everything kind of looks a bit black and white. Your cones are sensitive to bright lights and these are the ones that detect colour. In fact, you have three types of cones. Your long ones for red light, your medium ones for greens and yellows, and your short ones for blue wavelengths. Your brain reads these signals from these three types of cells all down the back of your eye and pieces them together to make an image that you see. It's just fantastic. We get to see this beautiful, colourful world around us and get to really appreciate it. Colour blindness occurs when there's a smaller number of your red or longer wavelength cones, which means that your reds and your greens are more often very difficult to tell apart. So there we have it, colour is just light reflecting or not reflecting off of things, and our eyes and our brains being smart enough to work that out. So my question to you is, if you had to describe the colour blue to someone who'd never seen colour before, how would you do it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as usual, if you have any science related questions, suggestions or comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Science with Steph. I bring out new videos every Friday, so if you consider subscribing, you can click here, or you can watch my last video by clicking here. Alright, I'll see you next week. Bye!